Cyberpunk 2077 is set in a future where literally every part of your body can be customised with a wide range of cybernetic modifications. And whilst our mods are often seen as one of the most important topics of discussion in Night City, I'd argue that legs have just as much, if not more, impact on overall gameplay. Now, there's not a huge range of leg mods to choose from in the year 2077, a mere three to be specific. These are the reinforced tendons allowing you to double jump, the fortified ankles which allow you to do one big jump, with the epic variant adding a hovering ability instead, and finally the lynx paws, which don't offer any benefits when it comes to jumping, but can be a major stealth boost in certain situations. Each of these leg modifications offer a range of benefits in varying scenarios, and whilst everyone's taste will vary based on the kind of build they're going for, my aim with this video is to break down the pros and cons of each of the three, so that you, dear viewer, can decide once and for all which is best for you. Let's get into it. Right the way down at the bottom are the Lynx paws. Now not only are these the least useful of the leg mods, they are also the most expensive. Coming in at 54,400 eddies, these can be acquired from Fingers Ripper Doc Clinic. Or if you punch that dude, then another doc in Kabuki right here also sells you them. And what exactly do you get for your 54k? Well, you walk a bit more quietly. Like that's it silent movement. It doesn't even sound silent in fact. Now you may not be able to hear this without headphones, but with these things equipped I am still making very audible footsteps right here. Anyway, these things have zero versatility outside of combat, unlike all the others, so I went and tested their effectiveness out in a few combat scenarios, and well, I actually had a lot of fun. No word of a lie, these were a lot more stealthy than I expected. Provided enemies can't see you, they will not hear you moving about. I did begin to find though that enemies were very responsive if you entered their line of sight, like detecting you immediately. This isn't Assassin's Creed. So I did some research and found two brilliant accompaniments to enhance the paws even further. The Soft Soul Feet mod allows you to also land silently, whilst Optical Camo negates that issue of getting visibly noticed. After combining these three and using a Sandeviston to effectively boost my camo duration, I could literally jump up and down right next to enemies right here, and they had literally no idea. Yeah, too bad mate. I'm afraid you're no Matt Murdock. However, enjoying this so much, I then decided to try the same stealth missions without the Lynx paws, and to my unfortunate surprise, found there wasn't a lot of difference. In fact, it's only when I was stood right behind enemies that they began to sense I was there, and pretty slowly come to that. If I'd been playing seriously and not trying to test how long they'd take to notice me without the Lynx paws, I could have still taken them out before they knew I was there. So yes, Lynx paws do make a difference in stealth, but it's not not as big as you might think, and certainly isn't 54,000 eddies worth of difference. What's more, the trade-off for the Lynx paws is any one of the other leg mods, epic or rare fortified ankles, or reinforced tendons, all of which are not only decent in combat, but also infinitely better for traversing the open world. Indeed, I think there's only a very select few stealth builds who would really need Lynx paws over the others, and even then I'd still recommend swapping them out for something else outside of combat missions, for example during exploration. Unless you're playing a ghost who has the time and patience to sneak around, move enemies about, hide bodies and such, I'm not sure why you would choose these. Then again, if you do have that level of patience already, then you probably won't mind the lack of shortcuts otherwise gained from the jumping leg mods. Speaking of which, now, having tested both the epic and rare fortified ankles quite a bit for this video, I've actually realised that the two are pretty different, and can't be reviewed as a single item, so I've split them up. And you're probably wondering why the epic versions are ranked lower than the rare ones. Well, let's start off with some more basic drawbacks. Firstly, the epic variant can only be purchased from Fingers, who many of you will have punched and thus locked yourself out of getting these. If you did manage to hold your nerve, then acquiring them will set you back 48,000 eddies. Not too far shy of the Lynx paws. The main selling point of the Epic Fortified Ankles is their ability to jump and hover for about two seconds before you come gliding back down again awkwardly. I tested this out in combat attempting to use Obi-Wan's high ground tactics only to find it a lot more trouble than it was worth. Firstly, I made myself a bigger target and second, by the time I'd steadied up and lined up a decent shot, I'd fall down again and miss, not the most useful. So I thought, okay, how can I make this last technically longer? 
Aha! Sandeviston, if I slow time to a quarter of its normal speed, then surely I get 8 seconds of hover time. Works for optical camo, it can work for fortified ankles. And yeah, no, that doesn't work for some reason. It seems because the legs are part of my body and my body is moving faster, I don't get any more airtime. So what else do we have here? Negate 15% of fall damage? Sounds useful. And actually, this one is. Here's a clip of me falling with these, and here's a clip from the same place with fortified ankles. Evidently, these legs do offer some decreased fall damage. But we can take this further. The soft on your feet perk max out will afford us a further 20% less fall damage. Then we can stack the clothing mod plume to negate fall damage even further and go beyond 100%. Except that doesn't really matter because even at 100% a fall from a great height that would normally kill us will still do that. Sorry. Overall, these things are clunky, and they make me feel like I'm wading through mud, not something you want with legs that are supposed to improve your maneuverability in the game. The hover mechanic doesn't last long enough to make it worthwhile, and at the end of the day, I can't even jump that high. The next two are much better for both that aspect and more. I had a reasonable idea before coming into this video about where each leg mod would rank, and whilst the order has more or less been adhered to, I can't express how close I am to actually placing these at number 1. The rare fortified ankles allow you to bound across Night City in a flurry of insanely high charged jumps. Simply hold down your jump button for a second or so and release when ready. This will send you far higher into the air than any other leg mod will allow, and unlike every other one on the list, I was able to jump to the top of this wall without having to ledge grab. This offers a huge range of versatility around Night City and allows us to reach never before attainable heights. I can climb on top of lampposts now to avoid oncoming traffic, a far more useful benefit than I care to admit. What's more, these are a far more reasonable 30,000 eddies and you don't have to hunt around for them either since they're available at almost all Ripidot clinics. Bounding across the rooftops with this thing was exceptionally fun and very reminiscent of Tobey Maguire in the first Spider-Man movie Leaping Across New York. However, compared to the fortified ankles, these do take some getting used to. With jumps requiring a bit more planning, there is a charge time on these things and fail to build up the necessary charge before a jump, and just like Tobey Maguire in Spider-Man 2, you could find yourself plummeting to the streets below. Fortunately, I didn't seem to die much whenever doing this, and whilst it doesn't mention it in the stats, I have no doubt that these do in fact negate some fall damage, provided you having already jumped and haven't just run off the edge of a building. Now, these aren't massively useful in combat itself. There's not much of a movement dynamic when dodging around enemies, but they still do have some use in certain combat scenarios nonetheless. Take the Arasaka Industrial Park for example. Now normally I'd have to go in guns blazing through the front gate or go on a massive detour in through the side. Not anymore. To my surprise, I was actually able to scale this wall by simply jumping and grabbing. Now, this opened up a huge new range of possibilities for tackling this combat zone. Hell, I'd much rather take these in here with me than the Lynx paws. Also, if you are one of the rare people who go in for Berserk and like using the superhero landing, then this is without a doubt the best way to gain height. Now, I don't personally love the superhero landing at all. It always triggers when I don't want it to and doesn't really provide any combat edge. Just thought I'd mention it though, for those who do use it. Overall, these are great. The number one device in the game for purely high jumps. Just remember, when you're leaping across the rooftops and highways of Night City, be careful. It's very easy to get carried away with these things, and if you do, there's no second jump, or indeed superheroes, to save you. Now, when it comes to popularity contests here, there's no pretending. Reinforced tendons walk away with gold at barely a sweat. But that's largely down to tapping into one of the oldest game mechanics which everybody knows and loves. Double jump has been a staple far longer than I've been alive to remember. I'd say it's most famous from Mario, but that might lead to people getting angry if there's older things from before that. So I'm just gonna say it's most famously a special ability of the Jedi in LEGO Star Wars. Much like the rare fortified ankles, the reinforced tendons cost 30,000 eddies and are available from almost all Ripidox. Now I'm gonna guess, this is the one that most people went for, and I don't blame you, I did too. Double jump is such a comfortable and familiar thing to use in any game. By providing two points of choice for which a player can jump, it's hard to beat the level of control when traversing the terrain. It's great in combat too, with superior versatility and handling to the fortified ankles, I can run around my enemies and make myself a far more difficult target. Leaping across Night City with these is a lot more effortless than the fortified 
fortified ankles, and honestly, I don't feel like I'm losing out on much by sacrificing that bigger jumping range most of the time. Now, whilst reinforced tendons don't seem to negate fall damage at all in terms of damage reduction, what I can do most of the time when jumping from a ledge is leave my second jump until I'm nearer to the ground. This resets my velocity and negates most, if not all, of my fall damage. This again doesn't work for those higher falls, however, and unfortunately, for the time being at least, there seems to be no surefire way of simply cancelling all fall damage. Even though two methods that should both theoretically work seem to not. Overall, reinforced tendons still win out as the number one leg cyberware of Cyberpunk 2077 in my opinion. They're not only the most familiar to the average gamer, but also provide the most worthwhile and appreciated versatility and bonuses across the board. However, I am pretty surprised to be saying this, but these things haven't actually won in my eyes by much with the rare fortified ankles again providing unique bonuses which I was previously unaware of, and in fact, I'm not sure which I'll be using more going forward. It's certainly not going to be double jump 100% of the time anymore at any rate, and I'm excited to discover what sorts of places I can now reach which I previously couldn't. So now I'm curious, since I'm guessing about 82% of you at least will be double jump users. Have I convinced you to try out the others for varying purposes? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this one informative or entertaining, then likes are very much appreciated. And finally, if you're a fan of cyberpunk in general, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I've got tons of cyberpunk content on this channel with two new videos coming every week. So thank you very much for watching this one. I'm Sam Bram, and I'll see you very soon in another video.